episode of Does That Hit Curse of Strahd, uh, the party faced an unexpected change of scenery. Uh, having fallen prey to the nefarious Chuck and the Deep Hollow Resource Allocation Company, the party awoke in a dead forest full of mist and mystery. Uh, wait, what's he laughing? What are you laughing? I'm just reading this stat block for Shaggy. I'm sorry. <laughs> 22 armor class? What are we supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, with your weapons taken and your futures uncertain, uh, you all began to trek the muddy road. Uh, several hours passed, and as you walked, you conversed and pondered, all while being trailed by this mist. Uh, several bodies lined the path, and one of which bore a letter from a burgermeister. Uh, the letter claimed a creature was draining the blood of the land, called Barovia. Uh, he also claimed his adopted daughter, Irina, was bitten and dying. The burgermeister damned his homeland, asking it to be left to its fate. Soon after, the party was ambushed and attacked by a pack of ferocious wolves, leaving them no time to process the letter. Um, along the way, a thunderstorm came. Uh, you guys ended up seeing some children running down the road, screaming for help. Uh, and Leaf took it upon himself to sprint at them, pick them up, and take them right to the house. Then proceeding to drop them on the deck, you guys had a little bit of a chat. Uh, Rose was extremely protective of her brother, who was just dropped on the floor as well. Uh, they no longer trusted the group after that, uh, but choosing the lesser of two evils, the children still asked the party to help them find their parents and brother. As we left off, you guys were just coming into the house. You all decided to move into the house to search for the parents, as well as the baby. Inside, you guys have walked into this little opening that then leads into a set of double doors that you would assume is the house. Um, these doors, you see them as grand oaken doors. Um, and you're, the room that you're in is, is torch lit. It illuminates this little room that you're in. And it, it's a little bit warmer than what it was outside. So what are you guys doing? Um, going up and opening the doors. <clears throat> Just for everybody's knowledge, this is the first time Leaf has ever been in somebody's house. So he is clearly tracking mud everywhere and not th having a second guess about it. All right. That's, that's fun. I think we all are, because we did just run out of, like, a storm, like, the fog. This room you come into here, uh, you see hanging on the south wall of the, this is a foyer room, uh, you see a shield emblazoned with a coat of arms and a windmill at its centerpiece. Uh, at the end of the foyer that you're in, you see a mahogany frame double door set with panes of stained glass. Quite a beautiful house. Yes, let's get in further. What does the stained glass look like? <laughs> Tell me, tell me about the rocks. So the stained glass that you're seeing in, in, in inside of this door, just laid in these doors, uh, they yeah. have pictures of a windmill and just people working out in fields around. Okay, so it's the same as the coat of arms. Okay. Yeah, general theme of this room. So, okay, you guys are heading into the next set of doors. Uh, before you open the doors, you hear a fire burning. Uh, just, you know, not, not blazing or anything, but you can tell now that you have come into the main hall of the house. And here, as you open the, maho excuse me, the mahogany doors, you'll see a wide hall that runs the width of the house. To your left is a black marble fireplace that's burning warmly. Feels pretty nice considering you guys are just out in the rain. You guys are soaking wet. Um, on the opposite end of the hall, you see an immaculate red marble staircase that climbs up to floors above. Um, mounted on the wall above the fireplace, though, is a long sword with a windmill cameo worked into its hilt. What are you guys doing? What a cave! I'll take a look at the long sword. <clears throat> okay. Can I reach it? Yeah, you can reach it. It's just above the fireplace. Can I tell from looking at it if it's a... you know, like a upper decoration or if it's an actual sword? Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. 17. 17. Uh... Due to your history with swords and just kind of knowing weaponry in general, you can tell this one has seen battle and it is still good to use. It'll 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 cut. This will do nicely. I uh, kind of just does it have like a scabbard with it? Uh, no scabbard, just the sword itself. I just hold. It. Okay. <laughs> Did you steal this guy's sword? I'll give it back. It'll be useful for dealing with whatever monsters in the basement. All right. So you guys can visibly see doors. Uh, they're located here, here, and here in the room. And there's also the staircase here in the middle. Um, 
Decorative paneling follows around the room and it even circles up the staircase up to the second floor. Um, what are you guys doing? Leaf takes a big whiff of the air. He's looking for the kitchen. Does he smell any food anywhere? He's looking for the kitchen. Okay. So, Perception check. Yeah, than the shaggy. Please, yeah. <laughs> the soinks! Uh, uh, what is that, 19 total? 19, okay. With your... your so imagine Scooby-Doo being lifted up by the smell of warm food as he is in yeah. almost every other episode he's floating. Uh, you, you see... Uh, this trail of smell with your nose uh, coming from this direction as well as this direction here. Ooh. Yeah. Do you yes. have a question? Yep. Just for a reminder from last session, the kids said there was uh, dreams from the basement. They think there's a monster. In the basement. Correct. Okay. Did they give us any information on where to go in here? Or did they just? They did not say anything besides they heard a monster in the basement. The parents went down there. They haven't come back, and they forgot their brother. Brother, Cody, you're you're really quiet for me. Brother was last seen on the second floor. How's that? That's better. I moved it away to take a bite of pizza. I'm sorry. Okay. It's really good pizza. How dare you? <laughs> anyway, as Leaf is like distracted by the smell of food, can I look around and check these doors to see if I can find one that leads to a basement? Uh, so you guys are heading in different directions, but go ahead. Yeah. I'll go to this door first, and I let's, will... Yes, let's handle what Leaf has done first, sure. since he could, yeah, he committed to the decision to go towards the kitchen. So bear with me a moment while I reveal that. Ooh, the dining room. All right, so as you approach uh, this double-set door, Leaf, you begin to hear what sounds like a great feast taking place. Um, you hear the clinking of glass, uh, you know, conversation taking place, and what sounds like silverware scratching against plate. Are you going to open uh, the door? Uh, before I open the door, I get closer to it, and my ears, they kind of start to twitch a little bit, and I go, uh, do you guys hear that? I think we're interrupting dinner. I, then I push the door open. So you push I hear the door. you, but I'm not listening. <laughs> All right. So as you open the doors, the sound immediately evaporates. Within the dining room, you see a beautiful feast of meats, fruits, and cheese just laid out. Think like it's just stacked in like a pyramid, but it's beautifully laid out. Uh, in front of each of the table's eight high back chairs is a place setting fit for whoever's ready to dine. Uh, every plate holds a morsel of food, and each shows signs of having recently been eaten. It looks like uh, the kids left in the middle of dinner, and uh, he leaf contemplates going over and seeing closer. But then uh, he re remembers, oh, we've got a job to do, and turns around and goes back out. Okay. And he'll walk over here to Cal to see what Cal's doing. I am just, I'm standing at this doorway, and I don't want to throw it completely open. I want to just open it slowly. I'm very cautious of what might be behind this door. <clears throat> okay. So as Cal he leans over his shoulder, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, so as Cal shakily goes for the door, no, he slowly just pies the door open as if he wants to take one piece in at a time, uh, and it reveals a coat room, and it's got several black hanging coats in there, and it looks like someone even left a top hat on the top shelf. Otherwise, it's in. Can I check out that top hat? Go for it, man. Can I detect if there's like, if can I do like a perception check or anything to see if the top hat has anything awesome about it or if it's just a top hat? Uh, after close inspection, you notice that there's nothing quote awesome about it. But if you wanted to do an Arcana check, if that's what you're concerning, uh, yes, yes. yeah, go for it. Okay, okay I got that. This is where Scott is. It's just, just a hat. I actually. Don't know. Yeah, well, that's a five. So. Uh, yeah, to you, it's just a hat. So. <laughs> I've done. I put the hat on. I put the top hat on. Thanks, Good. Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Good. You're giving me lines to work with, dude. I love it. <laughs> All right. What are you guys doing? So, so far, you have, uh, you know, Leaf. Leaf, have you shared the information about what you have experienced? I mean, I tried to. I said, I yelled out loud that uh, looks like we interrupted the uh, interrupted dinner in here, and uh, just turn around and went back over here with Cal. And now that Cal's gone into the closet. He goes over here, visits Roach to see what he's getting into, being a little nip shit. Cal walks out of the 
the coat, the coat room with the top hat on and tries to act like it's not a big deal. <laughs> like, he <laughs> loves the hat, but he doesn't want to make a big deal about it. Okay, so, so far you guys have stolen two items from this house. Go on. I'm down here by the staircase. Okay, and there is a door to your south. You can't tell. Yeah, like right here? Yes. Where I'm at? Yep. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the door. It doesn't have any dwarven writing on it, does it? No dwarven writing that you can see. All right, so you have opened the door to a den, it looks like. Uh, you open it, there's oak paneling in the room at first glance, that's what you first notice, uh, and you see that it's a lavish hunter's den. Uh, mounted above the fire, lit fireplace is a stag's head, and it's positioned around the outs and positioned around the outskirts of the room are three stuffed wolves, you can see. Uh, two padded chairs draped in animal fur face the hearth. Uh, that is actually blazing at this time. It's, it's a nice and warm room, nice and warm little study. Uh, two cabinets stand against the walls, um, and yeah. I'm going to investigate to see if I can't find anything worth anything. Okay. Uh, what are you investigating specifically? Uh, you said there's, like, cabinets here? Yeah, two cabinets stand against the walls. I'm gonna We're just going to raid the house. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, that's 17. Uh, 17 to investigate. So you yeah. notice that it's locked um, and you aren't able to actually yeah. open it. Alright, what about the other one? Do I roll again? Let's just have you open it up. Uh, so you go to open up this cabinet and inside you just see two little chandelier, like little uh, placement candles you would set. Just candelabras. Is there anything on the stag's head? Like any gun mounted or anything? Good question, but no, it just looks like a nice catch. That's it. Alright. I'm gonna go back out here. Oh, seems man, there was just, just a den. He's an avid hunter, it seems. Hunter? What? I'd like to open the door, Scott. Yep. Yes, Leaf, I would not go in that door down there. But what's he got in there? Don't go in there, Leaf. <laughs> okay. Alright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Roach opens this door that it just, it looks like it connects also to the dining room through a little L-shaped uh, doorway there, as you guys are standing in right now. Um, the kitchen is tidy with dishware, cookware, and utensils neatly placed on shelves. Uh, a work table has a cutting board and rolling pin atop it. A stone dome-shaped oven stands near the east wall. Otherwise, it just looks like a regularly used kitchen in a nice manner. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to this back door and I'm gonna open this one as well and see what's inside. Okay. Leaf's gonna be a little bit of a nib shit and he's gonna kinda follow him behind him and kinda creep inside here. Just looking around. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna move into the hallway before the door, but keep my back against the wall and Okay. So Roach is in here peering through the kitchen he then finds in the back of the kitchen. Uh, a little pantry, and the shelves of the pantry are lined by empty burlap sacks that are used to contain what looks like flour, grain, various assortments. Uh, nothing much else of interest lies in here at first glance. Just a kitchen and a pantry. There's no way down from here. Maybe we should go back and ask the children. Okay. I'm gonna go up. We can always try the yes. We can always try the staircase. I think that goes down. Does that go down or up? Uh, the staircase. Oh. You can only visibly tell that it goes up. It only goes up. Well, Creed's going up. Hey, little shits. Can I go back out there and see if uh, the kids are still there? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to go okay. with Creed up the stairs because I I'm aware that the kids are terrified of me now. <laughs> you are separated by the doors. The doors have shut, uh, but you can see through the glass paneling on the doors uh, the two children standing outside. Okay. Uh, children. We need to wade into the basement. I thought there'd be a way inside the house. How can we get there? They don't say anything. Mm. There never so was they're, a basement. So they're outside these, like, glass pane doors, is that what you're saying? Correct, yeah. I want to try to open the glass pane door. Okay. So you reach down to open it, and you cannot. It is locked. Mm -hmm. I take the long sword and I try to, to like, break the glass doesn't work you just bounce right back off naturally <laughs> <laughs> and the kids the kids don't seem to notice that you did that mm. 
Well, that's not good. I'm going to rush All he back. has to say. I'm going to rush back. Is everyone upstairs now? Well, I'm, I'm at the base. I'm at yeah, the base we're, of the stairs. Yeah, we're, we're like... They're, they're yeah. on the staircase right now, so... As you guys are, are about to meander up the staircase, because you're all standing on it, you start to hear what sounds like music coming from the second floor. Does everybody hear the music? At this moment, I'm barging through and I'm just yelling at you three. We've been locked inside. The children aren't hearing me through the doorway. There's something wrong here, something magical. The music what? floating down the stairs intensifies just a little bit. It's all right music. You can hear it start and stop. Sections are repeated. It's like someone's practicing. Oh, if we're trapped in here, we must go up. I guess we have to get out somehow. Roach, would you have explained to us what happened to you outside with not being able to reach the children, like even talking to them? Yeah, we'll or... just say. Yeah, we'll just say I explained it to you guys. I'm going to approach the doors that Roach just left, and I'm going. I'll go. I'm going to this the front room look through the glass panes and see the children, and I'm going to use telepathic speech. So I'm going to try and connect with the children and be, and just ask them, like, is the, do you know where the basement is? Okay. And so you send this telepathic message, you, you know, however you want to flavor it, um, but you don't get a response. They don't even look at you. All right. Well, I'm going to... Roach, if you're in here, I'm going to look at you and be like, yeah, you were right. We should. We need to get out of here. We need to stick together. And, now. Let's get with Leaf yes. and uh, Devil Owens over there. And with that, as, before you walk away, you do see the children actually walk off into the mist. Oh. I, mean, I, try, I try yelling for them multiple times, asking them to answer us. I didn't sign up for this. Oh my god. I'll just last tears in his eyes like, oh no. <laughs> I think and, I'm uh, I think I'm just bug eyed by like the children disappearing in the mist like it's a damn horror film. And I just you know, look at Cal here and I'm just like, we need to get back to the others. We need to stick together for now. I whisper to Roach and tell him that it's like there's there was nothing in their heads. I spoke to them and got no response. I agree. Let's go back with the party. Leaf and Creed are just hanging out on the stairs listening to music. <laughs> We're listening is to that, Creed right now? Is yeah. it that yeah. new uh, that, Circus Survive album? Yeah, no, 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 it's Creed. <laughs> All right, so... Paul's at, so do you guys... Uh, Seriously, from the edge, and I'm thinking... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they're popping upstairs. What the f, dude? So, you guys, uh, you guys all come back to the stairs. Do you relay what just happened? I look to Leaf and Creed, and obviously me and Roach are shaken up because we just tried to get the kids' attention, one with brute force and one with actually just Jedi forcing into their brains and having no response either time. And guys, they just wandered off into the rain. We they were, just walked away. Seems like we were led to the perfect trap, really. I mean, who can say no to kids in trouble? I think that there's something going on in the dining room, too. When I got to the door, they were all eating, clacking, and clanging their stuff. And then when I opened the door, there was nobody there. Something supernatural we, happening here? We should try not to touch anything in, anymore. And I kind of look at the longsword and it's like... <laughs> Uh, we all, all look long for. <laughs> Without calling any attention to the hat, I agree. I'm like, Cal's like, we absolutely should just keep everything where it is. None of us acknowledge the hat whatsoever. You just do the lady tip of the hat. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this is excellent. Oh. Okay, so the music... The only way out is through. The music is continuing to come from up the stairs. It's almost pouring down the stairs at you guys. It's not consistent, it's very, someone's practicing, but suddenly, what sounds like almost below you guys, you hear a wailing. <laughs> Shall we continue, fellas? Yes. No choice, let's go. Okay. So you all come to the top of the second set of stairs here, and it's just over that up to the Austin right. Austin sounds like Yogi Bear. 
it's kind of turned into that. I, I'll admit hey, yo, to yo, it. Boo, boo. Yeah. Hey, yo, yo. Hey, yo, boo, boo. Hey, yo, boo, boo. Let's get us a picnic basket. That's actually oh really good. God. That was actually yeah. Yeah. awesome. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, as you climb the red marble stairs, uh, yeah, it, you come to the second floor. You see unlit oil lamps here mounted on the walls of this elegant hall on the second floor. Um, hanging above the mantelpiece, uh, straight across, is a wood-framed portrait of what appears to be the Durst family. It shows Gustav and Elizabeth Durst with their two smiling children, Rose and Thorn, who you just saw outside, walk into the mist. Uh, cradled in the arms of, a fa of the father is a swaddled baby, uh, which the mother seems to regard with a hint of scorn in her face. Um, standing suits of armor are set along the wooden doors here in this room. Um, each armor set clutches a spear and has a visored helm, excuse me, shaped like a wolf's head. The doors here are carved with something that cannot be made out. Something terrible happened to this family. We're mixed in the middle of it. Looks like baby mama drama to me. Man, those wolf helms. Wolf helms. Badass. <laughs> That's legit what Roach says. Roach says. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leaf is going to come in and uh, kind of twitches the ears and do an insight check to see if he notices anything off with either the suits of armor or that painting. Okay, so we'll do insight check for the armor. Go for it. And that is, uh, what is insight for me? Uh, plus four, so mm, 13, not real good. They just look like unused ceremonial sets of armor with, as uh, Roach kindly portrayed, pretty badass looking helms. Can I put one of the helmets on my head? Uh, you could try, yeah, go ahead. So you take it off of the suit and you try and put it on your giant furbolg head and you notice that it's more so built for a human rather than... I leave it sitting on top of my head. Okay. So you're just wearing it around like a hat. That Pretty much falls off as you move, so you're gonna have I'm to kind use. Of, I'm, you're gonna have I'm to kind use of one hand of... to keep it up there, just so you know. Okay, I'm kind of jealous of Cal, so I hold it there for a minute. Eventually, I get tired of it and just drop it. Okay, and with a clang, it reverberates through the halls here and down the marble staircase. So, okay, are you gonna check out the painting as well? Be more careful about touching things in here. We don't know what's going on. Coming from the guy who took the sword off the wall. I yeah, kind of hold the long. That? I kind of hold up the longsword to leaf. I'm just like, this is my weapon of choice. If it could help us survive, then I'll use it. Okay. <laughs> and to be clear, um, to your guys' left back here, as you came up the stairway, you also saw that the stairs continue up. Just to be clear, because the diagram is. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Do you want to try this door to the north? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, can we do like a perception check to see which way the music's coming from? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be just a passive perception since you guys are all here. You hear now that the music's actually coming from the door down here. Free, do you wanna? Oh, Roach, do you wanna help me open this door? Yeah, I kick it open. <clears throat> so you bring kick it open. up the rear. <laughs> Cal's like on three. Oh, all right. <laughs> As right. you just kick the door open. <laughs> so you kick the f out of this door, who's like, never worked a hard day in its door life. And it, <laughs> with a slam, hits a chair to the left and right. So two chairs are hit, and you see what looks like a music hall. Uh, and back here in the corner, you see a harpsichord, and the music stops immediately as you open the doors. Uh, let me give you some description of the hall, if you will. Um, gossamer drapes cover the windows of this elegantly appointed hall, which has a brass-plated chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Um, as you enter, Leaf actually hears a whimper coming from the elegant harpsichord opposite the door. This place is giving me the creeps, making me very uneasy. So Leaf hears this whimpering and kind of pushes through the guys and walks in and like kind of approaches the... the uh, you said it's a harp? Is it the harp or harpsichord? It's the harpsichord over here. Okay. And uh, he kind of approaches it, and uh, I guess I'll do a, I don't know, investigation check? Nope. You just uh, approach it, and you see underneath, cowering, a dog. Oh, it's oh, a puppy. It's a puppy. And uh, should I roll an animal handling check? I'm going to get down like on one knee and stick my arms out and call to it to come to me. 
Don't ask me should you, but say what you're going to do. So if that's what you're going to do, you see that the dog is shivering and seems emaciated. And what are you trying to do? You're trying to get it to come to you? Yeah, just to come to me and, uh, you know, just, like, draw it into me. Show it that I'm his friend. Um, that is a 19 total. The dog approaches you. It's still shaking and emaciated, uh, but it is not afraid of you. It's afraid somewhat of the situation it's in. Okay. And uh, so I reach out a hand and, and I gently pet the dog and get it to calm down. Um, and I call to the party, look what I found. Uh, Cal notices that the dog isn't mean towards the leaf and approaches slowly. And in my backpack, I have rations. And one of the things in my rations is just some jerky. So can I offer the dog some jerky out of my, my out of my pack and see if he takes it and is absolutely okay. still okay? Oh, you'll so, be his new best friend, Cal. So I'm just gonna do a animal handling. Uh, just or wait, just... no, no, no. You're just handing the jerky okay. to the dog. So okay, yeah. so I do the I do the same thing Leaf does, and I get down on one knee and I just I slowly with an open hand let him know that I'm not trying to be aggressive. Sure. With jerky. As these several other p figures walk into the room, uh, one of which, you know, is, is covered in a cow, so the dog can't really make out his face, he kind of, like, gets hesitant, but he sees, you know, you handing him the food, and he comes to you, and he gladly accepts. He even gives a little wag of the tail, but he takes the jerky, kind of steps back a little bit, and he starts eating it, facing directly at you guys to make sure that you uh, take uh, In doing so, Cal, while you're reaching down, you actually see around his neck, there's a collar. Uh, you see the name on a tag. Lancelot. Lancelot, solid name for a solid dog. Mm, good puppy. Did he have it to the dog? Um, I'm done. Not, not playing D&D. <laughs> just quit. Why do you think? It, why do you think it's such a cute picture? Of <clears throat> yeah. You guys have successfully, you know, said hey, doggy, and given it some food. So, um, it starts to get closer to Cal, and it's like somewhat following you. I, I kind of look at the dog, and um, I'm going to... I assume that it's the family dog, so I'm just going to kind of ask, like, Gustav, do you know where Gustav is? Do you know where Daddy is? Can you show us where Gustav is? And kind of try to lift up his spirits, even though he looks so terrified. It doesn't really understand what you're saying. Um, it's it's just kind of sitting there, you know, kind of sitting there shaking a little bit. Being a dog. Yeah. Cool. And I turn I do... around to the party and just tell them, the dog knows nothing. <laughs> hey, Scott. What's uh, up? How big is that painting? How big is the painting? You would say that if you were to stand up next to it, um, it would reach, what are you, seven feet? I'm six feet. You're six feet. So it would, like, if you were to put it on your toe, let's say, it would come up to your, like, belly button. It's a sizable painting, but not too big you couldn't carry it. All right, so I'm going to take off the painting and carry it over to the dog. I was gonna, gonna, is the... Is the dog in the painting? Uh, the dog is not in the painting. Well, I'm just going to point at it and point at Gustav, the dog, to see if he can recognize what I'm trying to tell him. Uh, it The dog, Lancelot, looks at Cal to see if it has any more jerky. It really doesn't understand. All right, Ooh. so I'll just throw the painting. The dog um, knows nothing. Leaf, without even thinking about Cal, he grabs the hat off of his head and help pans it out to the dog for him to sniff. I reach for Leaf's throat for a <laughs> second. Okay. And roll initiative. Um, so Lancelot, in seeing this giant move his hand very swiftly in front of him, backs away. It's actually afraid. No, that's fair. That's fair. But, like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, I don't mean that I put the hat down on the ground and I put my hands back out and uh, I pour some water from my uh, water skin into my hand and hold it out for the dog to come drink if he wants some. Yeah, and it does that immediately. Immediately. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. Okay, I pick up the hat and place it on my head and just sneer, just give a shitty look to Thief. To Leaf, I mean, I'm sorry. Put the hat back on, and I'm going to go. Um, I suggest we maybe go and check out the other room, the north side of the... Hey, Cal, I don't remember you having that hat before. Did you get that here? Oh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's uh, no, it's a, it's a it's a new thing. It's a new thing. I'm just trying it on. I think you'd see it's, too. 
Okay. All right. Okay. What if it's us and did you disturb <laughs> something in the house? As me and Creed walk back into the main room, I see the the piece of armor that Leaf dropped the uh, the helm off of and just puts the hat onto the piece of armor slowly. Just now that Creed says that, I'm just tear like oh. Fuck. Oh, so maybe right. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, God. Uh, DM, can, I take a, can I take a quick look at the dog? I just want to really take a long, hard look at the dog. And so see you want to inspect that dog? Oh, so are you just looking at the dog passively, or are you trying to figure something out specifically? I'm just looking for the dog to see if he's about to walk into the mist like those kids. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do an investigation check. Then. Sure. Like the Westminster, like AKC show. Oh. I like, I get the dog to like stand straight and he puts his 13. head up. <laughs> 13. Uh, you don't notice anything uh, strange about the dog other than it is an extremely emaciated state. Its tail is constantly curled between its legs. It's shaking. Uh, you know, you guys have all seen abused animals before. I don't want to say it's abused, but it looks like it's been very hungry for a while. It does. It we obviously have to see how, how sick this dog looks. I think he may have been here longer Whoa. than we think. Leaf, I, I just remembered this. Leaf has a speech of beast and leaf. You can communicate with, though not understand, beasts and plants and have advantage on charisma checks to influence them. Yes. Um, so if I speak to him, he completely understands me. So are you going to use that? Yeah, um, so... I'm going to lean back down to Lancelot, look at him, and um, I, I'll, you know, I'll reference the picture. Uh, no, shake your head, yes, up and down, if you know where Gustav is. There you go. Okay. Uh, the dog shakes. It, it doesn't shake its head, based on what you said. Okay. Is something dangerous in this room over here? Shake your head up and down, yes or no. Or not shake or no. The dog does not shake its head. Okay, so up hey, this floor is fair. With the dog. I am. I love this guy. He's really funny. Can you can you ask it how long it's been without food? Like use use a year. I mean, I guess the dog wouldn't know time. I was gonna it? say how how do I yeah. describe time to a dog? I hold a clock to it, a calendar. Is okay, this month? This Disregard. I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's happening. I kick open the northern door. I follow Roach. I follow Roach, but I quickly turn around and tell Lancelot to stay. Okay, cool. I want to. I want to see. I'm gonna stay see here with Lancelot. So we yeah. have spent 30 minutes on a dog segment. So. Amen. <laughs> Worth it. How much time do we spend on Meepo? Not enough. God <laughs> damn it! Hours of play. Not enough. <laughs> okay, so Lancelot stays um, he knows the command stay it seems i didn't mention this uh, because you guys were talking but when cal exited the conservatory room the music hall uh lancelot quickly followed him uh don't know if you all caught that but that was I clocked that yeah. i did clock that okay so roach is kicking doors down like he's a swap member uh he's open flashing and clearing uh you come to a great place of study uh, a wealth of knowledge sits on floor to ceiling bookshelves here just weighty tomes of untold worth, novels, treaties, encyclopedias, poetries, histories, all just line these shelves. Uh, so vast is this library that a rolling ladder is necessary to reach the high shelves. Um, an exquisite desk face, faces the hearth, which is lit. Um, upon the mantelpiece, there hangs a framed portrait of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag. Uh, two reading desks flank the fireplace. Uh, what do you guys do? I'm hanging out with Lance a lot. I'm not interested in book and shit. Okay. Can I investigate the desk? You can investigate the desk, yes. Uh, let's just say that you spend enough time with it, you don't need to roll. Uh, the desk has several items on it. Um, it has an oil lamp, a jar of ink, a quill, a tinder box, a letter opening kit, and uh, it contains a red wax candle with it. Four blank sheets of parchment and a wooden seal bearing the Durst family insignia, so the windmill that you didn't see around. Uh, you do check inside the drawer, I'm assuming? Yes. Cool. And in there you find an iron key. Uh, it has no labels on it. It looks like a pretty plain iron key, that of which the owner of the house would know what to do with it. Uh, in addition to other items on the desk, there is a small framed oil painting of a dog. Uh, the painting has a transcript on the bottom. 
Are you going to check it out? Oh, yeah. Cool. I'm pocketing the key, and I'm reading that transcript. All right. I figured you would. That's why I'm kind of moving this along. So it's uh, the dog that you see is actually unfamiliar. Uh, its pose is very regal, and the painting goes to great lengths to, de to just detail the detail of the luster uh, of the dog's fur. At the bottom of the painting is a name. It reads Saphaxis. That is S-O-P-H-A-X-I-S. If you want to write that down, Saphaxis. Okay, so you've checked out, and you've got a key here. Uh, there are the items described on top. Of the fireplace is burning, and you have this great light. What are you guys doing? I found a key. There's also a picture of another dog, not like Lancelot over there. Guess this dog name was Sofuxus. <laughs> Sofixus? Sure. This handwriting's <laughs> awful. So after hearing about the new dog, Sofuxus, I I uh, dig through my inventory and I have a I have a, uh, a 50 feet of rope. Can I cut off some of that rope and tie it to the collar of the dog for a leash? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a just take a second and make a solid knot around the dog. That way, if we venture into new rooms and the dog wants to, like, we can kind of use it as our. Right, if so he if he if he feels like there's something fucked up about that room, maybe he'll kind of warn us to it before we go into there, and I can make sure he doesn't try to run away. Okay. Link try, is try to borderline appalled that you're tying a rope around this dog's neck. What the? Fuck? Wait, I, like, lift up, I lift up the rope and I'm like, "There's a collar. Relax." <laughs> I don't like. Somebody it. else did it. <laughs> Somebody else did it. Wait, if it's fine. Dogs deserve to be free. God damn it. The, the, the dog is not being alone. <laughs> the dog is just wagging its tail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take, um, I'm going to the, the I'm gonna take Lancelot and do the exact same thing. I'm going to move towards the stairs. What about the, all these books in here? We're not going to... You weren't interested in books, remember? I, I'm personally not. I'm just, you guys I'm are? I'm just waiting for you guys to stop with more of your dog play. Uh, can I <laughs> this invest is my dog. Uh, this is mine now. The bookcases? Uh, okay, so Roach has asked me your question. I'm going to adhere to that first. Uh, and then Aaron, what you were about to do, we can acknowledge that. Sorry. Um, just having to wrangle everybody here. Um, so you said you're doing what, Roach? I I'm just I'm investigating the bookshelves. You're investigating the bookshelves. Okay. So the bookshelves hold hundreds of tomes, hundreds. So give me a perception check uh, to look for anything in specific, if that's what you're. Oh, that's gonna be like a one for perception check. A one. Uh, you must have forgotten your glasses, Velma, because this shit all looks like gibberish to you. You don't see anything of note. Useless. I'm gonna open this door right here. Yep. Okay. DM, how big is Lancelot? I've been meaning to ask that. Um, yeah, smaller German Shepherd. Cool. Okay, so let's step away from the dog topic for a moment. So you guys have entered this room. Um, you notice here that this is, uh, it's just a room with two beds and two foot lockers at the south end of them. Uh, it appears to be where the servants hang out and slept. Um, yeah, you just see tidy servant uniforms hanging on the wall. Uh, nothing really much of note. It looks like, uh, yeah, this is just a room that's been used by some sort. I'm going to open this door, assuming it's just a closet. Uh, that exactly is what it is. So you open that door, you see more servants' gear. Uh, nothing really of note uh, at first glance. That seems to be just a room. All right, so Roach has opened this door here. You see a dumbwaiter that, uh, based on your understanding of houses, uh, would lead down to somewhere around the kitchen. Is this dumbwaiter big enough I'd to run and walk away? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like me some dumbwaiter. Is the is the dumbwaiter like how big is it big enough to maybe fit a person? It would be if that person were very small. Uh, fortunately, you guys are all giants, so it, at first glance you can tell that in this two foot wide stone shaft, none of you physically would able to be able to fit down. Just go ahead and head upstairs. This, this leads to the top. So really quick, as Cal starts to, he's the last one here, he's standing next to Lancelot. Lancelot kind of perks his head up and, and like looks back at the servant's room that you guys have just left. And then Cal hears what sounds like a scratching coming from the room that you guys just left. You check it out or are you going up? I, I, I clock what Lancelot is doing. Like I noticed that in the moment that he's kind of like 
perking his head up towards the door. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna slowly, I'm just gonna like walk into the first area, keep my back against the door, and see if you oh, see Lancelot. Okay. Sorry to cut you off. You see Lancelot come over here and start paying attention to the wolf. Okay, so I clock what Lancelot is doing and I yell back to the party like, "Hey, we might have something in here. Can I do a uh, our uh, investigation on the wall?" You can. Okay. I didn't see any Dark Souls, you know, messages there, so I don't know. Check the floor. That is a... oh, shit. That's a 16. 16. 16 so... investigation. Yes. On the wall. Awesome. So Lancelot, his hair is standing up on the back of its neck, uh, and you come over and you hear scratching, 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 uh, as if, like, fingernails are rubbing against the stone wall, perhaps on the other side. I, I relay to the party that I hear sounds on the... Boys, I hear sounds on the other side of this wall. Is there maybe something we can do to see if we can find an opening? Maybe a... Maybe a secret door? Oh, Him with a what? Reed's gonna walk up to the door and swing my sword at the, at the wall. Okay. Uh, it bounces off. Your hand is definitely hurting, but it sounds hollow. Oh, uh... So, Usually what works. leaf... What Leaf would like to do, he would like to go up to the wall and, like, just put his hands on it and, like, like with, like, medium force, like, tap on the wall, pound on the wall to see if he can find, like, a soft spot or, like, a, uh, a I'm trying to think, not necessarily, like, a stud, like, a, um, a hidden, like, door handle. Okay. Uh, so, roll, roll investigation for me, then, if you're gonna okay. do that. Yeah, one second. My ability to pull back up here. Oh, it's not good. Um, uh, six total. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Uh, the scratching oh. does start up again, but it sounds a little bit more distant away. Suddenly, Lancelot bolts out of the room. Oh, Lancelot! Buddy, where are you going? And I, I would instinctively follow the dog. I tell Leaf to grab his leash as fast as possible, and I take us and if okay, I Creed, are you still in the room with me, bud? I'm, I'm still here with you. Okay, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take us I'm gonna step back towards Creed, and I'm gonna ask him, should I just firebolt the wall? I feel like that's okay. the only choice. We can try anything at this point. Okay, Blow Creed. Creed, uh, Cal readies firebolt, and he's gonna see if he can try to at least deal some damage to the wall in hopes of being able to knock out a section and be able to dig through it. Okay. So you're going to do a... So you're just casting a fireball at it? So that's there's no check for that. So you're going to roll. Tell me what kind of damage you do. Okay. I am... Okay. So it'll be fine. Deal fire damage. Birds down the house. So I do... Um... It is nine points of uh, fire damage. Okay, so Cal just ignites this room with fire from his hand, however you want to flavor it. The fireball shoots into the wall, and it makes a hole about the size of your hand, uh, and you can peer into what appears to be a secret room. Oh, my. And... I yell for everybody to come back and help start pulling this wall apart. Are we able to do that with maybe like just our strength just pulling the wall down? Or maybe have Roach and Creed start digging with their weapons? Uh, I'll, I'll allow a strength check and you guys can help each other out if you're trying to break down the wall. Sure. Creed, get over here. Let's go for it. I'm with you. Cal hears, so... or not Cal, Leap hears Cal yell this and he tries to go and pick up Lancelot, does he give any like resistance like he really wants to be in this room? He absolutely cowers away from you if you're trying to pick him up, yes. Well, well I would of course try to do it gently, but... No. He, he's no? going to okay. cower away from you. It's a, he's emaciated, he already is a little bit distrustful of you, so yes. Uh, real quick, I'm going to try to cast my Murbaturgy, my Murbaturgy. Okay. And what are you doing is... with it? One of the things is you can cause harmless tremors in the ground for one minute. Okay. I'm going to try to see if that'll rattle anything up. So the key there is going to be harmless. Um, it's probably not going to do much, but try. Alright. I guess that didn't work. 
Yeah, the, the floor of the servant's room shakes and some things fall off the wall. Okay. All right, well, let's do this thing, Cal. All I'll right. give Creed the... Oh, go ahead, DM. Oh, no. You say what you're going to say. Sorry. I was just going to say, Creed's a big boy. I'm just going to have... I'm just going to help give him the help action. You go ahead and do your strength check. I rolled a time. 20. You rolled a 20. Okay. Then it's not going to take any time at all. Uh, Creed is going to just put his elbow into the wall... Uh, where the hole was, the hole, and it's going to open up, and you are going to knock over a bookshelf on the other side, and uh, through the dust, smoke, and debris, you now see a room. <laughs> so, in this room, you see uh, the bookshelves, as I mentioned, you've knocked the one on the wall over, but you can see books in there that describe fiend summoning rituals, and necromantic rituals of a cult priest called Ozibus. Uh, there's a heavy We're wooden chest with clawed iron feet standing against the wall in the south. Its lid half closed. Sticking out of the chest is a skeleton with leather armor. So, you've knocked over this wall, you've gained a different access point, uh, and you can now see into the room. Okay, so do I, do I read that book or do I see that book? So, it's there's a lot of them. They're all over the place and that's what they are. Necromancy okay, rituals... So... Cal, or Creed kind of looks down at Cal and he says, We are in trouble, my friend. I I recognize this type of thing. My ancestors. Ambulance? They called the ambulance? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Right. This, this, is, this isn't good. This family seems to be partaking in rituals that are basically summoning demons. Bring back the dead. Uh, I think we're in real trouble here. Breed, touch nothing until our whole party comes back with us. If we face trouble, it's better if we be in numbers. We're, I'm gonna come back to the crew and relay. Gentlemen, uh, we got through the door and it seems there's a lot of tomes of necromancy and rituals to bring back the dead and I, I fear we are in quite the trouble here. I recognize these tomes. My ancestors have similar interests being an acolyte of the church cal hearing like what creed's seen is like shaken like he is shook he does not like any part of this like i don't cal doesn't even want to enter the room knowing those books are in there okay. leaf just said the dead should stay dead damn it yes, that's leaf, it. i agree it should. Nobody should partake in these rituals. Roach is just gonna go walk in the room and just check it out. Okay. Roach, be careful. Don't be so headstrong. Don't know what we're getting into. Uh, he is now standing sideways on a tipped-over bookcase. Uh, it's it's about waist high, but he's having to stand on it at a slant. Uh, it seems that the skeleton's feet were crushed by the falling bookcase, but uh, you do see the skeleton. You can check out. Anything in the room? Can I push this uh, bookcase back up, you know, out of the way, so I can move around? Yeah, you can push it up. It is going to close off your exit, though. So, just so you Can I, like, slant it in the room, you know, where I could still get out? I just want to stand it up. Yeah, uh, you, we'll, we'll just say you take enough time. You go ahead and position it away where you're standing just fine. Okay. Is this, a chest? is this a chest here? It is a chest, yes. And it appears that there is uh, a skeleton with leather armor sticking out of it. Yes. Okay, can I try to lift the chest and see if I can pull the skeleton out? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead and do a strength check for me. See if you can pull this leather armor and its body out. Uh, that's a three. That's I'm really three. like shit for your game oh. fan. <laughs> so the dust and the dirt that is in the room that was caused by the kick up uh, of the wall being broken down actually make you slip a little bit. You fall on your ass but get out before anybody else sees it. Uh, you do not successfully pull the body out. Out of the chest. I dust Good. myself off and open up the chest, I guess. Okay, so you're opening up this chest. Um, you can see after close inspection that the skeleton actually belongs to a human who seemed to have triggered a poison dart trap with the chest. He's got three darts that are sticking out of uh, his armor and his rib cage. Looks like the dart firing mechanism inside the chest no longer works. It's, it's been unloaded upon by this poor soul who didn't get lucky. Uh, clutching the skeleton's left hand is a letter. It looks like he was trying to get out of the chest. Lucky me. I take the letter. And are you going to try and read it? Oh, yeah. Cool. 
My most pathetic servants, I allow you and your pathetic band of miscreants to exist in my land only for my own amusement. I am not your messiah, and I've not come to lead you on a path to immortality. Continue your parscal rituals and have your meals of flesh. Carve my visage into every stone you see. Sire as many bastards as you wish, I care not. You are all worms writhing in my earth, and I shall not save you from your wretchedness. I much prefer you as you are. Um, the chest also contains three blank books with black leather, leather covers. They're worth 25 gold pieces each. Uh, you also find three potions of healing. The deed to the house, I'll put this all in the chat. Uh, the, de the deed to the house, deed to, the win to a windmill, and a signed will. Lastly, it looks like there is a ledger showing a large sum of Barovian gold, it says, called Barovs. There is a note in the ledger that says... The inheritance of 500 Barovs shall remain in the basement vault until the first child reaches 21 years of age. Uh, this is all signed by Gustav. So was that note written by Gustav? It, it's not signed by anybody, it seems. I just show up a letter. Okay. There's some nice blank books in here that we might be able to make some money off of. Some potions uh, of healing, three of them. Roach, uh, you mind coming back in here for a second? I... Pick up uh, pretty much everything of value out of that chest and bring it out. Just throw it on the bed here. Okay. Now, gentlemen, tell me, have you ever heard of Asmodeus? Yes, who hasn't? He's the God devil. Hell. My ancestor seems to have taken the same liking to him and did, re did rituals and tried to seek him for power, I feel like this might be something similar, and that is something that I deeply despise. I, I am worried. As you all stand there in the, in the servants' quarters, you hear what sounds like creaking above you and dust kind of falls from the ceiling, uh, as if someone upstairs is walking. This is not a safe place. They have, they have summoned something here. And those children, I fear, were not children. Seems pretty believe. real to me. Yes, Leaf, but trust me, this, this family has partaken in things that are unnatural. We, we need to have our heads on a swivel and be ready for anything. Look what they did to poor Lancelot, those dirty bastards. I'm afraid Lancelot is probably the most minor thing here. He's the most important thing here. And I slowly reached a pat him on the head again. I just kind of rummage through the stuff on the bed and start putting like the books like in my satchel or something in my bag. And he just says, speak for yourself, devil horns. I'm always ready for a fight. Yes, Roach. Uh, just, have you ever encountered Supernatural and anything on the likes of this? Do you know what you're in for? Do you? He just turns and looks at him. Yes. I just told you my ancestors, I'm well versed in this kind of acts. And you'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I kind of clock the, the sounds coming from upstairs and the dust falling from the ceiling and just point upward and be and just say, like, should we venture on? Yes, maybe, Cal. I... Maybe, maybe answers lie ahead. Cal, I hope you don't scare easy, my friend. Oh, it's I do. It's about to get very scary. Uh, Cal does not. When you bring up the uh, you bring up the the name Osmodius and all of these necromantic books, and, and Cal is very, very uneased. But he knows there's only after going to the front door and realizing there's no way out. The front door is no way out. There's only one way out, and that is killing. It is hopefully ending whatever is in this building. A creed asks Cal. Have you ever seen an image of Asmodeus, Cal? Many a time in the church, yes, I have. Now look at me. I can't. I could yeah. never. He's too ugly. <laughs> look at me. Look at my special eyes. <laughs> uh, I think it's time that you guys know that it was my ancestors that dealt with Asmodeus directly. And Asmodeus took a, a liking to my ancestors and embedded himself 
been to the offspring of my ancestors. I, I know we are in deep trouble here. If it has anything to do with Osmodius or any other deity, we are most definitely in danger. And Leaf, I don't know if you've ever encountered danger before, but I hope you know how to fight, friend. Hold my own. And then he reaches out an arm, a hand, and puts it on it on Creed's shoulder and says, Just remember, we are not our ancestors' mistakes. Yeah. Or, or maybe you are. I don't know. Thank you, Leaf. I appreciate that. That is also why we are typhling. We were humans at one point. And because we partook in Osmodius' rituals and granted the power from him, he turned us into typhlings. And I hate that about my species, but that's actually... Well, I won't get into that. We'll talk about it later. Well, I we... think your horns are pretty metal. <laughs> Thank you, Leaf. Let's continue, you guys. I pocket one of the healing potions, and then I hand the other two just out to anyone. I'll take Here. one. So we have distributed uh, the three healing potions. It looks like Roach has pocketed the rest of the items. So make sure, you know, everyone that's taken one has it in your inventory now so we don't forget. And make sure you use those if you, when you do use it, get it out of your inventory. So... As we come out um, here into the Great Hall, the second floor hall, uh, you guys see something strange. Um, the top hat that was resting on, on the suit of armor has seemed to have moved. In fact, the whole armor has moved. They've switched places almost in a clockwise manner. So now down here, he's wearing, without a helm now, he's wearing the top hat. Oh. I, kick over, I kick over like the nearest one. You kick it over, okay. And it crashes against the floor with a bang, and it falls into pieces. I walk up to the next one and kick it over. The same thing happens, but this one is wearing the top hat, so the top hat just kind of rolls. And then the next one. <laughs> so on and so forth, and they all crash. Cal, Cal, Cal feeling the energy joins in Roach in the, the, the merriment and festivities and kicking shit over. <laughs> Uh, you guys are making quite the ruckus, um, but it's the same story. Uh, there are now pieces of armor strewn against the ground. Uh, should we throw these pieces of armor into the fire? Burn it? Destroy it? I just put my, like, hand on Leaf's shoulder. It's like, it doesn't work that way. And then I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen what? this shit before, man. <laughs> Leaf just is dumbfounded. He doesn't understand what he's saying, but doesn't question it and just follows along. Okay. Uh, let me reveal some more areas. If you guys are heading upstairs, that is. Is that what you're doing? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So as you guys climb this set of red marble stairs, you come to a dust-choked balcony. You do not see another stair set above you. It seems that this is as far as the road goes. Across the hall, as you reach the top, there is a suit of black plate armor standing against the wall, uh, draped in cobwebs. You then see black marks on the wall just above it that forms a few words that few of you can understand, but there is one. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, the highly polished wood paneling on the walls and floors are Looking just really dilapidated, it's really dusty up here. Creed, you recognize the writing? It's Colonel. I recognize this writing, fellas. It says, as above, worse below. As he is reading that passage aloud to you, all of a sudden, Fuck. you start to hear an infant crying. The lamps and fires on the first two floors of the house, you hear them extinguish with a whoosh. Oh, fuck. The highly polished wood paneling around you and on the walls and floors are stripped of their luster. Think of Silent Hill when they're plunging into hell. The house begins to age and crack. Banging at the front door can be heard as a howling comes from downstairs. What do you guys think? Well, well, this place. We don't. We can't get out. This is the only way. Well, to this, it's worse above or worse below. Do we want to go back down? We might need to, but let's search these doors first. Alright, stop right there. Suddenly, metal scrapes against wood. Creed, you start to see that the, the armor right next to you, the cobwebs start to shake off, 
and all of a sudden the scary object that was once inanimate is now reaching towards you. Roll initiative. Roll me to throw the goddamn things in the fire! Of course, the one we didn't kick over. <laughs> I am going to step up with this long sword that I have, and I'm going to take a swing. Okay. Ooh, natural 20. There we go. Wow, nice. Got a boy. There we go. I am uh, using both hands for this. <clears throat> That's what she said. So 17 points of uh, I believe is slashing damage. I just walk up right next to Creed and just kind of push him out of the way and just like raise the long sword above my head and just slashed through this thing's chest. And I assume it's an awful sound. Like yeah. the metal is chinging. It's like that. Nice. It just scrapes and everyone, including the dog, just kind of it. Uh, so yeah, nice hit. All right, so the clanking armor is now going to turn its full attention away from Creed because it was actually reaching towards Creed. It's going to look right at Roach, uh, and he is going to try and grapple him. So what did you roll? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Not great. Probably a fail. All right. Uh, so, yeah, he rolled a 19 plus 2, so he is going to grapple. Oh, yeah. right. So with his 25 feet, he's actually going to uh, walk with you kind of bear-hugged uh, towards the marble stair. Oh, that's not good. All right. And that is actually going to end his turn. I quickly say, not so fast, friend. And I go in for an attack with my short sword. Okay. Does an 11 hit? It does not. You just, uh, you're going in with a short sword, so it just clings off his back. Can I take a bonus action? Oh, uh, what's that going to be? Uh, I, I can take an unarmed bonus action. And what are you doing with it? Can I flavor it as a tail whip with my tail? Yeah, go ahead and roll. Uh, 16? That does not hit, so... It Holy just, shit! It cleans <laughs> off his ass, you slap him on the nice shiny metal axe. I tried, Roach! Somebody! He's going for the staircase! I'm just struggling. Just get off me! Yeah, Cal, you're up. Cal is going to notice the slow walk towards the staircase, and I am going to cast Ray of Frost in an attempt to hurt and slow him down okay so i make a um a ranged spell attack and since it's not like a line effect it is just like towards a creature so like i'm targeting one specific person okay so and i'm going to attack the um uh, suit of armor and that is a 14 plus 6 it's a 20 to hit 20 does hit yeah that is a three whole three points of damage but its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of its until the start of my next turn by 10 feet okay yeah all right so hopefully i have slowed him down from carrying him too close to the edge okay next in the turn order is leaf yeah i don't think that uh, so uh clarify this for me is he still carrying roach He is still carrying roach yes okay um um, that's what I was thinking. Um, so how would this work? Can I grapple a guy who's grappling somebody? Yeah, I suppose uh, we could do that and do a strength, like a strength comparison to see what you roll yeah. and what I roll to see if you can, uh, so I drop, Off of roach. drop roach. Yeah, I'll allow that. Okay, let's do it. that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to run up and I'm going to like kind of hulk up and um, I'm going to try and wrap my arms around him and throw him off. So it's uh, athletics, right? Yeah. All right. And oh, that's a nat twenty plus five. Nice. So you do successfully knock. Let's say you grab hold of both of them, and mm -hmm. you kind of shake, do like a little shimmy, and Roach pops off. He lets go, and now you have uh, the animated armor here to wrap it. Yeah. So I get in there. I put my arm in, like force it in between the two of them force Roach out, and then rip the suit of armor away. Uh, do I do any damage with that? With a grapple? Uh, I don't no, think I do. No, you just reduce his speed to zero. Yeah. Okay. Can I move him further back closer to this wall? Yeah, because you have him grappled, you can move with him, but your speed is reduced by half. So that's 10 feet. I've got 30 feet of movement. Let's see. So you've used 10 of your 30? Yeah, I, moved, I so, used yeah. 10 to get here. You can use and then, 10 to move them. Okay. 
Can I uh, move him and try and throw him overboard next turn? Uh, you can. Okay. So I'm going to move him over to the railing here okay. next to Roach, and uh, I'm going to get ready to throw him over. Okay. And yeah. that'll be my turn. Yeah, I can't do anything Yeah, because that's going to be an additional action for the next turn. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So top of the turn order, we have Roach, who just got released from his grapple. Uh, he can definitely feel his uh, the, the imprints of the metal armor around his, his chest still. What's he doing? Uh, did my attack from earlier seem to do any damage at all, or no? He is looking pretty banged up. Okay, I'm going to take another swing at him. Okay. Hold him still, Bigfoot. That'll Got him. be 18 to hit. 18 hits. Okay, that'll be 8 points of slashing damage. Nice. So I just aim for, like, basically the head of this thing, and just kind of, like, kind of like ringing a bell. Just bringing my longsword and just hitting it in its head. And as you ding it, almost like a like a golfer, you just knock his head off, and it starts to roll down the stairs. He is still standing, uh, but now his helmet is rolling down the stairs very audibly. You hear it cling, cling, cling. All right. So we now have... The, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So now we have the animated armor. It's his turn, and he has to take an action to break the grapple, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's go. All right. Big fireball. <laughs> oh fuck. What'd you roll? Um, I rolled athletics. That's gonna be thirteen total. I did not do well. Okay. Well, he rolled in total five. So. Oh. Uh, he is still. He's struggling. This this half giant furball is just holding him in place. Uh, you just hear the squeaking of his armor parts roll together as if he's moving. As you know, the the armor should not be scraping against itself like that. He is pissed. All right, so now we have Creed. We'll move 10 feet next to him, take a couple Next of up, attacks. take your hits, let's go! That's a nat 20, baby. Oh my Atta god, boy. you guys are rolling so well. All of them. All right. Natural 20. So, uh, so how do you want to do this? <laughs> how do you want to do this? I love it. Uh, I got a short sword, so I'm not going to do anything spectacular, but I'm basically just going to take the short sword and kind of jab it into the back where a person's heart would be okay. and just take it out not too deep not too deep don't stab me all right <laughs> so you stab it and out a real clean cut and the armor just falls it, it didn't have it, uh, it it's as if once you did that whatever was holding it all together just falls apart and it all just crumples some of it rolls down the uh the balcony here and just crashes below you the rest of it just sits in front of your feet uh it crumbles around uh Beef here, and yeah, it takes us out of combat. Well done, guys. He takes a chunk of the armor and just crushes it in his hand. He feels powerful in this moment. Go ahead, Leaf. I think you kind of saved our asses there. I try. <laughs> and uh, he, he looks over to the dog, and uh, can he get a check on how the dog's doing? <laughs> uh, you can just take a look at the dog. You can see it's it's kind of cowered a little bit more down the stairs but still watching what you guys are doing yes thank you leaf you helped me out i appreciate it no problem i got my homie is there anything on the uh suit of armor of value uh you do a quick rummage through the parts and much like the ones downstairs uh you don't see anything uh, just pieces okay. of metal guys we might have another four of those to fight downstairs nah i knocked them over they're dead for we sure <laughs> they shoot their asses earlier. Okay. They're all reanimated. <laughs> they reanimated into like one big giant. Like, oh, God. oh, it is Dark Souls. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Leaf goes part of the way back down the stairs too and uh, calls to Lance like, Come on, let's go, Lance. Let's go. He kind of comes to you, but he keeps his distance. Again, he's a okay. little afraid of you because you got That's scared. That's fair. That's fair. We're going to open these doors. Okay. Roach, are you opening yours? Uh, which door? Clear. Let's, Both of them. Uh, let's do one at a time. So Creed asked first. So. Oh, it's another closet. Oh, wonderful. All right. So you see a oh, dusty closet on both ends. It looks like these are. It just holds cleaning shelves and cleaning supplies. And I attack the broom. <laughs> you attack the broom. Okay. Roll it. Go in. Oh. Yeah. Cal from the staircase is like, get him. <laughs> All right. And as you get swing him. at the broom. 
it starts to animate and come to life. <laughs> God damn it! Oh my God, God damn it! <laughs> Roll initiative. That's fucking incredible. Are you serious? Absolutely. All right. Oh, I was kind of meaning it as a joke, Scott. I didn't actually want to fight the bird. Okay. <laughs> no, you just, I, <laughs> I thought you just took the initiative order. Like, okay. All right, we don't have to fight it. No, you, you attacked it. I got a nine. You got a nine. Yeah. And Cal with a 19 over there. Doesn't even know combat's going on, but he's on it. <laughs> I just heard somebody's attacking something, and I was just like, yeah. Like how Scott had that just set up on deck, dude. Like I knew Cody was going to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he knows it so well. If it, honestly, in my mind, it wasn't Cody, but I guess that's who he is this campaign. <laughs> that says a lot about the other three of us. Do I at least get my attack in? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came up and attacked it. I guess I'll just roll it in since it's a creature. Uh, we'll say no, because you do get a surprise attack, right? Does that work as you don't need to roll the hit? I think it's attacks? I think it's advantage. Like, you just have advantage on Yeah, okay, yeah. we'll roll like that. Yeah. Roll like that, thank you. Because it is a sentient room. <laughs> 16. 16? Yeah. That is not yes, it. <laughs> if that it's misses, a sturdy I'm broom. It does this hit. Swiffer. It it's does a hit. Swiffer. Okay, that's with uh, two hands, three points <laughs> of flashing damage. Three points. Let's flavor this a little bit. You guys kind of don't know what's happening. Roach just kind of runs into this room, sp sprints almost, and just runs up and attacks this broom back in the corner. It's like he has a problem with some brooms. The broom, <laughs> uh, in an attempt to like save itself and also just be like, Bro, what the fuck? I've been in here for... Anyways, <laughs> you come in, and you just hit it right midway through the hilt, and you chip the wood off, and it kind of, like, shakes, and it's, like, it's it's taken aback. I, I just got attacked, thinks the broom. Okay, so next we have... What's oh, Cal's turn? What are you yelling, though? Sorry? I'm just yelling, everything in this house is alive. Trust nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Cal. I'm just going to use my movement, and then... If the I'm gonna ready uh, firebolt, okay. uh, if the because I can I all I hear is I could spy a commotion from the staircase and I'm like and I can hear something going on so I'm gonna prepare firebolt if I see an enemy exit the exit the closet door I'm gonna just like snipe, I'm gonna attempt to snipe it out of the air. You're gonna attempt to snipe it out of the air. Okay, cool. We got a broom in here. <laughs> Get the bro! That's the bro! Get the bird nerves! Get, 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 get the bird in here! here. <laughs> Alright, so this broom, it's the broom's Uh, the broom, it just woke up from a nap. It's like, guys, what's going on? It gets hit, chipped a little bit by Roach here, and it's going to try and disengage. So it's going to take a disengage action to try and get out of the room, and he can go 50 feet of flight movement, because he is not walking. Oh, he uh, tries to make his way out of the door. So he is able to disengage from Roach. So with his ready to action, we'll say that Cal is able to take his... He's ready for this thing. He hears it coming, so he is ready to take that firebolt. Uh, this is where the broom makes it, and we'll say that's when Cal takes his shot. If that is okay, his so choice. That's a quick one. Going, going to attempt a Kamehameha firebolt. Okay. And I... Okay, I hit for a 10. Does that hit? Uh, so you just shoot, and the fireball smacks against the wall as this thing makes a, a top gun maneuver and just drops as soon as it gets to the balcony. Uh, and as it does so, it disappears down to the bottom. And then blazes! So you guys do not see it anymore, and that ends combat. Because right where I left it, it was 40 feet. And it had an additional 10 feet and it just flew away. So, uh, if you guys wish to pursue it, you can, or we can continue. You tell me. It's just a broom. Le Leaf uh, leans over to Cal and says, I think Roach is a murder hobo. <laughs> Let's go ahead. We'll end it here. The broom did escape. You guys annihilated that suit of armor. You guys have checked out a, just one room up here on the, set, the third floor, and the rest of the house, uh, you know, it, it's changed. Notice when you came up here and Aaron read the infernal inscription above the plate armor, things changed. So that's where we'll leave it off for tonight. As above, no, Dad, just one more story. <laughs>
<sighs> I'm like foaming at the mouth to play this for more than a couple hours. I know, right? Me too. Well, welcome to Durst Manor, boys.